All right, boys, we got ourselves a chapter this week, but before we get into it, let me just talk about the previous chapter real quick. So we saw the beginning of the triple threat match between Okotsu, Takako, and Ryu, and Okotsu was doing, you know, just fine despite being kind of outnumbered, although it wasn't like they were both ganging up on him, although it kind of seemed that way. It kind of has to since the stakes are on Okotsu. He is the protagonist we are following in this fight going against two heels, but it essentially boiled down to Ryu firing off one of his hair cursed energy plays blasts and Okotsu just bare hand blocking it which uh, really messed up his hand but this led him to getting directly cracked by Takako on like the follow-up using her curse technique where she like cracks the surface of space but Okotsu was able to recover from both of these attacks using reverse curse technique healing his hand and any damage that he received from Takako but this is like draining him of course because it takes a lot of energy to do that and he already healed himself like this in his previous fight with Kuro Rushi anyway and then he eventually came to the realization they're like okay if I'm going to be able to take both of them down I'm gonna have to get serious and getting serious with a kotsu of course means busting Rika out now Rika was previously protecting the civilians inside of the stadium you know stopping them from becoming collateral damage of course but a kotsu's just like uh you know what I, I don't really have time for that anymore I gotta take these two big powerhouses out and then we see him like signal the ring the ring that we saw at the end of volume zero and he said come Rika give me everything and that brings us to the beginning of this chapter so Rika comes out and she looks like an ape <laughs> has big hairs. Yuta has the toge symbol in his mouth and uses cursed speech directly without a mic. Okay, so the whole thing about without a mic here is a reference to how he used cursed speech in volume zero when he originally copied it from Togi. I guess this is just further showing us how far he's come since then with his own curse technique, which is, according to Genjaku, the ability to unconditionally copy curse techniques or something like that, I'm paraphrasing. But thankfully, it's actually acknowledged in this chapter by somebody else. Fight starts off with Yuta attacking Uro with Inomaki's curse speech technique, and he says, Don't move. Then Rika and Yuta then tag teams Uro. Yuta then says, Love, to which Rika responds by blocking Ryu's attack. It hurts Rika, so she punches him flying away. Okay, so it seems like he used curse speech on Uro, essentially paralyzing her, and then he was about to attack her with Rika, but then from behind, Ryu, I guess, fired off one of his hair serrows. But it's so powerful that it's even hurting her, which is not really a surprise. I mean, I didn't expect her to be so powerful that not even a super powerful curse technique like that would affect her. And then she's reciprocating on Ryu. So here's where we're finally getting an explanation on what Rika actually is, or the the current Rika. This Rika is an external stockpile of cursed techniques and cursed energy left to Okotsu when Orimoto Rika, the real Rika, the kid Rika, passed on only when he is connected to Rika via the ring. He can use these cursed techniques, fully materialize Rika, and use the cursed energy stored in Rika. Imagine an external hard drive of cursed energy and cursed techniques. Yuta connects to it with his ring, but their continuous connection is limited to only five minutes. Wow, so that's it. And I guess this is large in part what we suspected was the case. And to be honest, I really like this dynamic. I think it works. It's kind of balanced or as balanced as something as overpowered as this can be, I suppose. The five minute time limit is new, of course, but very much needed because if it wasn't there, then like I've been talking about in these reviews, he would essentially be unbeatable or at least as close to it as we can get outside of like Gojo or somebody like that. And I guess this does go back to the fundamentals that Gojo was teaching to Okotsu in volume zero. He initially wanted him to channel Rika's cursed energy into the sword he gave him, but I guess he just wound up putting it into the ring because you know, the ring is important to him since it's like Rika's ring and the whole symbology there. Yuta is fighting Uro on the other side. He conjures something from his hair. Uro says that the Fujiwara, who she thinks are Yuta's ancestors, have always been getting in her way and asks if they're so afraid of what she might become. She's then cut by Shikigami and realizes that these are droves. Uro realizes that Yuta's curse technique is copy. 
The fight intensifies. All four of them are congregating in one area. All right, this is pretty cool. I don't know why, but I just love it when we subtly find out that Akotsu has just copied a technique out of nowhere. And this is a surprise, of course, which we didn't know that Akotsu did this. We didn't even see his fight with Drew. We just saw the end result with him just hacking up Drew, and then that was it. It was implied that it was like a no-diff fight for him. And in between the jobbing, Akotsu picked up Drew's Shikigami. Now, I don't know if he has like the massive Shikigami that Drew has, because as far as I know, that's the only two that we, the audience, are aware of, like those two huge mole rat things. So it's possible maybe he had smaller ones. I haven't really been able to see any leaked panels, so I don't really know what's going on here exactly. But like I said in the beginning, I like that his copy curse technique is being acknowledged by someone outside of Kenjaku because I think he's the only person to ever directly say what it was. Yuta says that he doesn't know what his ancestors may have done to her, but that the limit will come if one only lives for themselves. Hiro asks him to shut up. Only people who are already someone will say things like, live for someone else. You don't have to become someone important. Yuta and Rika easily overpowers Uro and Ryu. When Yuta was engaged in battle with Uro, Ryu tried to sneak attack, but Rika barehandedly deflected his blast and punched him hard. So I don't know if this is happening again, or this is just retelling of what previously talked about. Either way, pretty cool sequence, kind of mirroring what Akotsu did in the previous chapter, aside from the counterattack. The chapter ends with Ishigori thinking now is clearly not the time for words. And then suddenly all three of them call on their domain expansions. Okay, so if this chapter after already wasn't hyped enough, it's ending on a huge note here with not one, but three domain expansions at the same time. Pretty sure this is the first time we're ever seeing something like this. And not only that, this is finally the debut of what a Kotsu's domain expansion is. But aside from that, I'm just really curious to see how this is going to play out. I mean, we know that when two domains kind of activate, like the stronger one will overcome the other, or at least that's what we saw happen with Gojo and Jogo. And we also saw that that Megumi was able to use his own to make like a pathway out of Dagon's. What's going to happen when three intersect? I mean, we can assume on paper, Akotsu probably has the strongest domain, right? But aside from that, it's really ambiguous between Uro and Ryu. So this could just be the end of the fight here. And they both activate their domains and maybe they clash or whatever. But then Okotsu's is just so powerful that he just spreads over both of them and then just takes them out to together possibly or they pull a Megumi on him and before he can overwhelm them they use their own domains to make like a back door out of his so we only kind of get a glimpse into what a Kotsu could do and then maybe that saves it for later on in the series like towards the end of the Cullen game when he decides to use it fully on whoever is the big threat at that point not really sure but let me know what you think in the comments guys and if you like the video please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already have a great day I'll see you in the next one